Hello everyone, welcome back. This is 1-6 Basic Circuits Pulse Signal Conversion in the Compact Resonance Introductory Topic Series. I'm MU222 and today I'm going to introduce two main circuit types, basic circuit types. Really. One is monostable circuits and one is toggles. And this is going to be very useful because you can use these two types of circuits to do pulse and signal conversion between them basically. So without further ado, let's get started. I will start on with monostable circuits first. So what is a monostable circuit? It basically refers to cir a circuit that can generate one or more pulses. Remember, it's one or more pulses. And monostable circuits can be subdivided into pulse generators and pulse limiters, although they are both very similar. I won't exactly tell you the difference here because it's not that useful. But just let you know, monostable circuits is great, good enough. You don't really have to identify between them. They are basically all just circuits that can create pulses. That's it. Now there are a lot of different types of monostable circuits, and let's start off with this here. We have a button. It will always be a button with a resonant dust, sticky piston pushing this block up, and this repeater here. Now this dust turns on, which will push this block up, but then this repeater will still receive fire and power. That is a monostable circuit. You can see this redstone lamp turns on and off. So that is a monostable circuit. And to be specific, this is called a rising edge monostable circuit. So what is a rising edge monostable circuit? It refers to a circuit that produces one or more on pulses when powered and do not produce any signal when depowered. So look at this button. If I turn this button on, this, res this lamp will turn on and off, but when this button turns off, this lamp does not receive any power. And what we define as rising edge is when this button turns on and the other edge known as falling edge is when this button turns off. So as this resonant lamp turns on and off during only the rising edge or when the button is on, we call this a rising edge monostable circuit. A similar design is this, except it just uses a non piston as sand, we sand him fall back by themselves. Pretty useful. And with the power of observers, you can also just do something like this. This is also a rising edge monostable circuit. Uh, also, uh, if I want to, I will short term monostable circuit as mono. So, there you go. And we also have some other techniques. For example, we can use a circuit breaker for this resonant dust. We can break the connection of this resonant wire to create a, mon a rising edge mono. And we can also use, for example, comparator logic, which with this repeater negating the output of the comparator. Nice. Also notice that this two-tick repeater can be changed to three or four, as long as it's at least two. Next up, we have this one. This sticky piston again pushes this block. It's very similar to this one, except we're using repeaters instead. And these two repeaters are of the same direction. You can see this lamp turns on and off. And some you can also do some modifications. So as long as this repeater has a delay equal to or larger than this repeater, then it's fine. So for example, 2-2 two, two is fine. 4-2 is also fine, like so. Another interesting one is this one. This is a dropper facing upwards to this hopper, and this hopper pushing the item back down. So it creates a rising as you want to stay circuit. Nice. And I can tell you, throughout my experience, the most common ones you're going to use is this one, this one, and this one. The rest of them aren't really that useful because it's quite large. But then, hey, 
learn more is better than not learning. I think. So, anyways. Now we proceed to falling edge monostable circuits as opposed to rising edge. So what falling edge monostable circuit refers is literally circuits that do not produce any signal when powered, but it produces one or more pulses when depowered. So for example, we have a sticky piston with this observer now at this location instead. If I power this, nothing happens. When it's getting depowered, this resonant lamp turns on and off. Yep, falling edge monostable circuit. It literally powers when the button turns on. If you have noticed something, we can actually make a connection between rising edge and falling edge monostable circuits. And that is to simply inverse the input. Like so. If we can inverse the input, then inverting the input of a falling edge monostable circuit will turn it into a rising edge monostable circuit. And vice versa. So for example, inverting the input of a rising edge monostable circuit turns it into a falling edge monostable circuit. So that is important for you to know because sometimes the inverting property is able to help you to create pulses at different timings and it's probably going to be very important in some cases. So are there any methods that we can also do following each one stable circuit back to this one? Well, yes, we can still use the circuit breaker for example, except we just have a two tick of delay. Falling edge. Nice. What about comparators? Yes, we can do that, except we, again, switch the roles. This repeater will first negate the output of the comparator, but during the falling edge, it doesn't, because this has a longer delay. So the, so the rest of them fires. And notice that you can, again, customize these two. You can make it 4 as long as it's greater or equal than 2. And this, for this case, as long as this one has a 2 tick longer delay than this one, so you can do 4 2, for example. And notice this one, we can do that as well, except we just have this here instead. It works. And 2 can be set to 3 or 4, again, as long as you call greater than 2. And yeah, another very peculiar one is actually repeater locking. As long as we have these two repeaters having the same delay, it is avoiding as one super circuit for this repeater. Now this works as long as these two repeaters are, are on the same set of delay, and this repeater you can set it to, for example, four, and it will create a longer pulse, like so. The reason why this works is something related known as tautic priority. I will explain this in. 2 4 tautic priority racing condition. Wait, no. It's 2 3 tautic priority racing condition and more and, and their applications. Sorry. But yeah, anyways, you would learn more of that, I guess. But then it's still in the intermediate topic series, so I think that's a bit too much. But in case you're interested and you're, you already know this basic stuff, you can go check out that video instead. Are there any more ways we can do falling edge? Well, we can abuse sand. Yeah, they do affect. They are affected by gravity, so you can just use that. And introducing one tick comparator gener uh, pulse generators. They all work. This sticky piston will spell the cauldron, so yeah, they work. And most importantly, it's a comparator one tick. And this is useful for some observerless doors. Not so useful in doors with observers, but then, uh, you know, they're still somewhat useful, I guess. And throughout my experience, I can tell you some the useful falling edge monosuper circuits are this one, and uh, perhaps this one. The sand one is still okay. The rest of them is just for reference purposes, I guess. But then, again, learning more is better. So, anyways, 
Now that we have discussed rising and falling edge monosleeper circuits, what happens if we have both edges that get fired? Introducing dual edge monosleeper circuits is just basically a combination between rising and falling edge monosleeper circuits, and both edges it will just produce one or more pulses. That's right. Remember this circuit breaking thing again? Yeah, we if we have a one tick repeater here, it actually is a dual edge monosleeper circuit due to timing stuff. Want to learn more about timings? You can check that, check the video in 1-11, uh, Introduction to Timings. Don't worry. But for now, just know that this works. And the simplest dual edge monosaber circuits ever, Observers. Yeah, this is literally a dual edge monosaber circuit. What do you want? Observers are literally this. But then, notice that you need to give a long enough of delay, basically. A long pulse delay in order to have this observer fire twice. So yeah, that's all for rising, falling, and dual edge monosaber circuits. We'll enter a some variations of these monosaber circuits. Well, have you ever thought that if we can invert the input of a rising or falling edge one of the stable circuits or a dual edge but it doesn't really matter we can also invert the output of any mono stable circuits well we can in some cases and hence we have a new type well three new types of mono stable circuits they are inverted rising edge inverted falling edge inverted dual edge mono stable circuits it's literally just the rising, falling, or dual-edge monosable circuits, except the output is inverted. That's literally it. Here we introduce the first one, which is the rising edge one. So, you can see this piston powers, but then it will get depowered during the rising edge. Notice that if we invert this again to power this rest of the lamp, this will behave as if it's just powered by a rising edge monosaber circuit and not inverted at all. So that's an important property, I guess. And that's literally how the name is derived from. If you invert an inverted rising edge monosaber circuit, you will get simply a rising edge monosaber circuit. And same for the falling edge and dual edge ones. And same thing for this one. This is also an inverted rising edge monosaber circuit. And remember this dropper and hopper one? Well, if we detect from the dropper instead, we get an inverted rising edge monosaber circuit. And well, now goes to the inverted falling edge monosaber circuit. You know the drill, it just does its thing during the falling edge. And yeah, again, inverting the output will just return back to a falling edge one stable circuit. And the same thing applies for inverting the inputs of any inverted rising or falling edge one stable circuit. If you in if you inverse the input of a rising oh sorry, if you inverse the input of an inverted rising edge one stable circuit, it will become an inverted falling edge one stable circuit. And if you inverse the input of the of a falling edge monosaber circuit, it will just go back to an inverted rising edge monosaber circuit. That's a mouthful of words. So yeah, hopefully these properties don't hurt your brain. It should be quite simple to be honest. So I've explained you this and well, let's see the dual edge one. We can have an in inverted dual edge monosaber circuit like this here with the piston, but if you invert the output again, it will just become a normal dual edge monosaber circuit. There are some other interesting dual edge monosaber circuits, for example, you can use a solid block with sand. We are abusing sand again. And we can use line blocks if you want to. So, also I would like to tell you more, is that notice we have, for example, this dropper hopper where we can take a comparator output here. This also means that a monostable circuit may have multiple output locations which correspond to different types of monostable circuit. If you take an output, for example, on with this hopper instead, it will just become 
a rising edge monotonic circuit circuit. But if you take an output from the dropper, it will become an inverted rising edge monotonic circuit circuit. And in addition, in some future cases, let me see if there are any. There aren't. But then, yeah, anyways, in some future cases, you would see that if you place a device at different location, one may act as a rising edge monotonic circuit circuit, one may act as a falling edge monotonic circuit circuit. And to be honest, we already will have one here because if we take a look at here, this one, if we have a piston here, this piston will act with this circuit as the rising edge while this lamp will act as a falling edge. So, you know. And that is basically what this property is saying. Now, Let's get on to a slightly different topic. We know we now learned how we can convert a constant signal into a pulse. And well, we have already known that the term for this is monostable circuit. And congratulations, you have already learned half of the trick. The other half is the reverse is to turn a pulse into a constant signal. This we call the circuit a toggle. And toggles are also called C flip-flops basically. Although uh, this isn't very accurate because T flip-flops usually only refer to two-state toggles. But then in reality we have some more complicated toggles. We have some conditional toggles. We may also have some free state or four state or even more state toggles. And those are definitely not T flip flops. But then for simplicity here, we will just assume that for now we will study two state toggles. So all of the toggles here are just T flip flops. Don't worry about it. And yeah, we'll learn the second half of the trick. So how do we do this? Now, for example, we can, again, utilize the modern stable circuit. That's why I taught you the modern stable circuit beforehand, because it's useful in converting the other way. And we can have a sticky piston with a resistance block to spit out this block, such that, hey, this resistance lamp will now no longer turn off until we press the button again. Nice. Well, we can also do this with observers, because observers are here, so why not use them? Here we go. There are some more compact toggles. I will show you here. This, you might not know what it's doing, is literally just two droppers. The bottom one facing to it, towards the top one, the top one facing towards this minecart. The minecart gets sucked by this drop, by, by this hopper. This hopper sends the item back to this bottom drop. And the minecart also has a comparator below it. That's literally the setup. The minecart is used for stability. Because we all we want the item dropped from the dropper to always get picked up by the hopper below. That's why we added this minecart. So this works by powering the top dropper, not the bottom one, the top one. And this works by powering the bottom one instead, not the top one. I would further explain uh, how you can build these dropper circuits. I think uh, it should be in 2-5 circuits. Uh, no, it's not 2-5. Uh, it should be 2-7. Circuits, dropper, hopper, circuits. I always remember it wrong. But yeah, anyways. So, you will learn more about dropper, hopper logic and uh, how you can wire dropper, hopper, circuits. And I think in that video, I'll also introduce you how you can probably build a free state toggle, for example. Because dropper, hoppers are going to be very useful when dealing with these complicated toggle situations. Now, Here's a kind reminder. Only input this type of dropper circuits with a repeater or a comparator. 
if you input this with a redstone dust, this is locational. Because the bottom dropper can skip the top dropper and not and the top dropper can never take the item which can power this comparator. It can skip the top dropper and just the item will just loop back to the bottom dropper always. In some locations this might still work, but in other locations it will just skip the dropper and doesn't work. Same for this one, it can still skip some droppers, making it not work. Or it can choose to not skip droppers and make it a free state toggle. You never know. So, please, input your dropper circuits correctly by using a repeater or comparator input. This is due to, I guess I've already said it, locationality and will be explained or at least set to you in 2-1 basic locationality and directionality. You can check that video if you want to learn a bit more about that. It will just talk to you some very basic locational and directional stuff that you should know and to avoid. Because we don't want circuits that only work in parts of the area and not other parts of the area, for example. That's not nice. And yeah, anyways, so let's continue on more toggles or see flip flops whatever we want to call them we can for example use a clock yay and lock it with repeater locking and yeah with the right frequency of the clock we can lock this such that this lamp will turn on and turn off for each button press well it's based on the toggle I shouldn't say turn on and turn off but then it will turn on at one time and turn off at the other. Yeah. Anyways. The clock concept can also be used in this one. We just have a hopper clock that is two hoppers facing each other. And again with a monostable circuit. It just push this item here. And this item cannot go back to this hopper before this hopper gets locked. So we just use this to make this lamp go on and off with a toggle. There are some other interesting toggles that uses pistons, for example this one, if I press this, oh, it powers, but then if I press it again, it turns off. Yay! Some of you might be confused how this works. Don't worry, I'll explain it. Now if you have, uh, if you really want to know how this or some other circuits work, throughout this video, 1-11 Introduction to Timings is going to be a very important video for you because it basically t tells you how you can count timings and to determine what circuits work and what doesn't. But for now, you don't have to learn this, I'll tell you how why it works and, and yeah. You can further learn more about timings yourself. So basically what happens, if I turn this on, nothing really happens, it just retracts this. If I turn this thing off, this piston will retract the collagen. And before it can get re-extended by this torch, this piston powers and blocking it from pushing. So for the other end for the other end, this although is powered, this kit actually never realizes. Ah. But when this redstone torch turns on, it actually powers this piston first. So we ended up with this. Like so. And that creates a toggle. It's also a very similar concept for this one, actually. Except this is via quasi connectivity and stuff. So if we power this here, this will stay powered until this these does turn off this will turn off this redstone torch will turn will make this extend before this has the opportunity to extend like so same vice versa it's nothing special everything is symmetrical okay
so now we have gone through how we can do toggles basically I can tell you the important ones you need to remember is this one this one the concepts at least and this one and this one are actually also very important these are not that important but then learning from these are also you know better than learn, learn nothing now the next section is actually going to be even more important is telling you how observers would react in monostable circuits now record some knowledge we have learned from 1-1 properties of resonant components 1 where I told you the phenomenon of quasi-connectivity it only does to pistons, droppers and dispensers and due to quasi-connectivity we can ex expect that monostable circuits will act differently to components that can be powered by quasi-connectivity compared to components that cannot be powered by quasi-connectivity. So that is a property. And we are going to further investigate in some simple, just simply, simply a sticky piston with an observer monostable circuit. And I can tell you Sometimes the monostable circuits will accidentally turn into a toggle. Sometimes. Anyways, let's get started. So now we are going to investigate, like we are going to check these out with a long pause. So here we see. Before we remember that this is a redstone lamp. But now I have replaced this with a few pistons because these two are going to get fired during the rising edge and this one during the falling edge. So very interesting. You should know this because falling edge in here, you can fit some very useful stuff. And this is due to quasi connectivity, of course. So same for this here. We have this and this. What ends up having this circuit is this piston reacts as if it's powered by a rising edge monostable circuit. This piston reacts is as if it's powered by a dual edge monostable circuit. This piston reacts as if it is powered by a falling edge monostable circuit. Three pistons, different reactions. It isn't that crazy actually. And same for this one, except everything's reversed. This one, nothing special. It just goes up. This one, nothing special, it's just a rising edge. This one, nothing special, it just goes down. This one, uh, a bit more special, I guess, but it's literally just a falling edge. This observer will power this piston via quasi connectivity. That's all. And this one is also a bit special, because both of these pistons will fire in the rising edge, but then only this piston will fire during the falling edge, because this observer will still give power to this piston, but not this one anymore. You know. Now we have investigated how these circuits will react to long pulses. Let's see what it will do with observers, or I should say, one tick pulses. Now, remember that before, if we use a long pulse, these two will fire during the rising edge, this will fire during the falling edge. Well, the rising edge still works, not the falling edge. And remember, these pistons fire during the rising edge, right? Not the falling edge. But if we use a redstone lamp, rising edge, oh look, falling edge, it also powers, why? Well, again, you can explain this using timings, but since you haven't learned that, I will tell you that during the falling edge, this observer will get pulled but also still emits a pulse, a zero tick pulse, and then get retracted. So usually observers give you a one tick pulse or a two game tick pulse. But during, when it's getting retracted by a one tick pulse, it will give you a zero tick pulse. And this type of zero tick pulse, resonant lamp can react to it, not pistons though. Unfortunate, but it still remains useful because sometimes we do not want to have that extra powering. 
and that gives us an opportunity to make a toggle. So nothing special here, nothing special here. They literally react the same except for this one. Well, it's still the same actually. Except again, as we have established, the zero tick pulse here cannot fire this piston. Whereas this one, it can fire the rest of that. Hmm. Nothing special here. It's just the same. Oh, a bit special here because look at what he does. <laughs> it's literally a delight dual edge because this piston, when spitting out this observer, it will actually fire this piston again, pulling this observer down and fire this piston. Everything powered under quasi connectivity. What about this one? Well, before we establish that only this piston will get fired during the falling edge and both will get fired during the rising edge, well, the rising edge still works, not the falling edge. Because again, the zero-tick pulse here cannot power this piston. Whereas this resonant lamp, of course, it will still do a dual edge because it can receive that zero-tick pulse. Now, if you think this is bizarre, well, Let's see what happens if we power these circuits with a 2-tick pulse or 4 game tick pulse. You might get more crazier. Now, notice that the important circuits we need to consider are only uh, sticky pistons with observers do facing the same direction. That's the important circuits because, you know, the it also corresponds to these where these access is the edge but the pistons only access the rising edge. What happens with a 2 tick then? Uh, well, nothing powers actually. But then for the rest of them, it's the, it can still power because, well, if we 2 tick this sticky piston, these pistons are going to receive a zero tick pulse. This actually it doesn't even receive any pulse, don't worry. And the zero tick pulse, again, these pistons cannot react, but the rest of the lamp can react. So same for this one, the rest of the lamp can react to that, but they're not pistons. They suck. And for this again, none of these pistons are going to fire, but then the rest of the lamp is going to fire. Yeah, that's basically how the two ticks work. Very boring for pistons indeed. However, if you have something special, for example, an updater piston, thing exact differently. Both of these circuits are with an updated piston. Now normally you would think this piston will only get rising edge, not falling edge. Well, uh, yeah, rising edge works. Actually, the falling edge also works. The zero tick pulse finally gets recognized by the piston. And same for this one. The zero tick pulse get recognized by this piston. And that is exactly due to the addition of this updated piston. I will further explain this in 2 4 Tick Counting Input Bug M1 Timing Series, a section where I will explain block event delay, which is what this piston is giving, thus having these pistons to realize the zero-tick pulses that they should react. And hopefully you will just get more excited from this because you can see redstone, can, redstone circuits can react very differently if you are powering it with different pulse lengths. And even more interesting, I also have included some very odd uh, pulse lengths regarding these uh, this piston with an observer here, this sticky piston. And if you power it with an odd uh, pulse length, it will actually do even something more bizarre. And you can check that out in the exercise which I'm going to introduce you. So let me just give you an outline of this. The first three of them are just letting you learn more about uh, monostable circuits. And the latter three are to let you learn by doing, is to let you build monostable circuits by yourself and toggles by yourself. So, I have intentionally left out some monostable circuits just to let you learn or experiment by yourself what these monostable circuits do. This is uh, for 6.2. And then for 6.1, it is ha it has this burnout thing. You can check 
that out by yourself. And this reference circuit might be useful for you if you need to count the pulses, but I don't know. Let's see, you will see the question by yourself. And speaking about the odd pulse lengths, this is it. These circuits are going to give you a lot of fun. It is in addition to the one tick or two tick pulses, we also have some three game tick or five game tick pulses. Yeah. You can try to experiment on themselves how these circuits are going to work. I'm not going to let you explain them because this will be related to, to timings which you haven't learned. But then experiment it yourself would be a great learning opportunity to understand how these circuits behave. Okay, to the building parts, well, I've tried to make them simple and to be honest, this exercise itself is actually quite simple. The first three is literally just observation questions. The latter three is just to let you build simple circuits. So, take it as an exercise, um, try to finish it, and don't worry if you don't know the answer, because again, they are going to be at the back. Tear down this black wool wall, or just go behind it, both of them work. And yeah, just remember to follow these questions, uh, the instructions are already in these books, so yeah. Uh, hope you learned something from this exercise, I guess, and... Uh, yeah, and before I go, I actually forgot to tell you, uh, there's a useful resource that I should provide you that is uh, actually a page in the Minecraft wiki. So there is a page called Redstone Circuit slash Poles, which is also how I get some of these modern stable circuits here, because quite frankly, we don't use a lot of niche modern stable circuits but then putting them here just adds up your knowledge at least you know these circuits work but then are you going to use it probably not but then learning more is better so the next video um is going to be uh, for the introductory uh, topic series is going to be basic circuits post extenders multipliers and clocks and some of the circuits will actually also take reference from the minecraft wiki page again because quite frankly they're also quite useful but then i'll also introduce you to more uh knowledge on some observer related circuits so check that out if you want to and yeah thank you for watching this one I will see you in 1-7, basic circuits, pulse extenders, multiplies, and clocks. Thank you.